After my recent Gabriel Angelos conversion guide, I asked you guys to suggest what well-known character you would like to see me bring up to date. After a huge amount of suggestions, I managed to whittle it down to five, and it was Dante that won by a clear lead. I'm Pete the Wargamer, and today I'll be showing you how to convert a Primus version of Commander Dante of the Blood Angels. Dante has a very distinct looking armor, much like the rest of the Sanguinary Guard, and to represent this in primary scale, I needed to look towards the Stormcast Eternals. Their armor is similarly scaled against Primaris and also has a more formed look to it, perfect for reflecting Dante's Artificer armor. So, with the Stormcast in mind, I needed to pick a particular model. I decided upon the Prosecutors as they had a great pose for being held aloft by their wings, something I could take advantage of due to Dante's jump pack. I used one of the Easy Build miniatures, particularly the Prosecutor Prime. These particular models did require a little more work to get ready, but they are a little cheaper to get a hold of. Once I'd removed the legs and torso piece from the sprue, I then cleaned up the components, removing any mold lines or tabs with my knife. While the pose and the armor of the Prosecutor was a great substitute for primary size sanguinary guard styled armor, it came adorned with distinctly Sigmar related iconography. Before I could use these components, these lightning bolts needed to be removed. I used my knife to carefully shave away the small lightning bolt symbols on the knee pad. I cut away small flakes at a time so that I wasn't applying too much pressure. Once the bulk of the bolts had been removed, I then held the knife slightly perpendicular to the surface in order to smooth it out. Alternatively, you could use a file for this. This process was then repeated with the bolts hanging from the tassets. These were a little trickier as I didn't want to damage the tassets as I did so, so take your time and make small changes. A problem I faced with using the Easy Build Prosecutors was the fact that it came with a head. This needed to be removed, so I started by clipping away the top of the head, keeping the collar at the back intact. I then proceeded to remove more of the remaining parts of the head with clippers before using my knife to remove the harder to reach parts and to smooth everything out again. Once done, I was left with something that looks like this. As Dante's armor is very similar to that of the Sanguinary Guard, I next started to try and attach a torso plate to this prosecutor body. Now, this wasn't going to be straightforward. It was going to require a lot of cuts and trims to get right, but for a single one-off character like this, it was definitely worth it. So I began by aligning the two halves together in order to identify where I would need to make the cuts. This would be an incremental task and would require me to repeat this measuring up a few times. The first area that I identified was in the inside of the socket joints of the sanguinary torso. This was first clipped away and then smoothed out with a knife and a file to create an open area. This then allowed me to measure up and get the component a little closer to the rest of the body. This allowed me to see that the areas either side of the armor's abdominal armor plate also needed to be removed. Again, these were clipped away at first and then trimmed back to create a smooth surface once again. The next area to cut away were the shoulder halves from the sanguinary torso. The prosecutor torso has full discs to attach the shoulders to that protruded away from the body. So I needed to cut away at the sanguinary torso so that these could interlock. To make sure I wasn't cutting away too much, I again continued to do this incrementally. At this point, I was very nearly at the place of having the two torso halves fit together. All that was needed to do was to trim back the part of the abdomen on the Stormcast half. This was cut back quite a bit, but it didn't really matter about being too neat here as I was covering over this with the Sanguinary Guard torso. Once I was happy with the two halves of the torso lining up and fitted together nicely, I could finally glue them together. Again, it took quite a bit of trimming to get this far, but for a one-off model like this, that extra time is well worth the result. Once the torso had been glued, I was then able to attach the leg. For the weapons, I was originally going to use those from the Sanguinary Guard Kit and attach them directly. 
However, against the larger primer scale torso and legs, these arms would look ridiculously small in comparison. So I needed to use some Reva arms instead. The only caveat with using these is that the weapon and the pistol arms are in the opposite arms to Dante, but this is a pretty small difference that we can easily look over. I began with one of the axe arms from the Sanguinary Guard Kit. This axe was chosen for its very similar appearance to the axe Mortalis that is wielded by Dante. However, I needed to remove it from the arm. So I used my knife to cut above and below the hand before finally filing the cuts flat and smooth. In a similar fashion, I was then able to remove the blade from the reaver arm as well as trimming away the knuckle duster from the fingers. Finally, I cleaned up the top and the bottom of the hand, creating a flat surface that was ready for the next step. I wanted to ensure that when I added the axe to the reaver arm, it would be solid, so I decided to pin it. I began by drilling a 1mm hole directly through the hand with my pin vise. This was then repeated for each half of the axe, drilling a few millimeters into the center of each side of the handle. I then took a length of 1mm thick steel wire and trimmed it to roughly an inch in length, long enough so that it poked out each side of the hand. I tested out the fit of the handle against the wire to ensure everything was lining up properly before gluing the hand, the wire and the handle together with some super glue. With the wire fixed in place, I then brought in the top of the axe and again tested the fit. The gap between the axe and the hand informed me of how much of the wire I needed to trim before I could then again bring in my super glue and fix them together. Next I had the Inferno pistol to create. This was constructed from the Reaver's bolt pistol and a malter gun taken from the tactical squad sprue, although pretty much any malter gun will do here. The first task was to remove the iconic vented barrel of the malter gun before filing down the end of it. In addition to the barrel, I carefully clipped away the hanging pipe too. Once removed, I then held this against the Reaver pistol to determine what cut I would need to make in order to fix it into position. The relevant trims were made and I then compared the fit again. The fit still wasn't spot on, so I continued to make a few extra trims until I was happy. At this point, the weapon was ready to be assembled, but before I did so, I needed to make some adjustments to the larger Reaver shoulder to allow a shoulder pad to fit. I then proceeded to make a series of cuts and trims to ensure that the shoulder was reduced enough in size to allow the pad to be added over the top. It was important to perform this step at this stage before the piece had any extra items it added in case they were accidentally knocked off. With the arm prepped, I could continue with the assembly of the gun. First, I trimmed the slightly protruding end of the pistol to give me a flat surface to attach the malter barrel to. In a similar fashion to the axe hand, I then proceeded to drill holes into the pistol and the barrel before attaching a length of wire and supergluing the two halves together. Finally, the length of pipe that had been trimmed previously was then glued to the underside of the gun. And with that, the hardest parts of this conversion were completed. I then proceeded to attach the arms to the torso, which thankfully covered up a few of the gaps created when I attached the new torso front. With the arms in place, I could attach my shoulder pads, which had also been taken from the Sanguinary Guard Kit. The original Dante model comes equipped with a standard double vented jump pack. However, the Sanguinary Guard come with these single vent packs instead, and it was one of these that I decided to attach to the back of Dante. Luckily, the Prosecutor Torso already comes with a flat area to attach his wings to, and this made an excellent anchor point in which to add the jump pack. I was also going to attach the wings that came with the jump pack. However, as these were likely to get in the way during the painting step, I decided to keep these separate for the time being. You've probably already guessed where I'm going with this next step, but once again, I dipped into the Sanguinary Guard Kit to acquire a suitable death mask helmet. Due to using a modified prosecutor torso, I needed to trim down the bottom of the neck joint to reduce its height a little. With this done, I could glue the head in place. Finally, a few extra pouches and purity seals were added to the model, and with that, all I needed to do was to paint and base the model, which left me with this. And here we have the completed Primaris Dante. 
I painted his armor in the traditional colors of the Sanguinary Guard, and I will be publishing a guide on how I painted the gold very soon. Much like my Gabriel Angelos tutorial, it's always a great challenge trying to modernize older models or create new ones based on existing characters. Sourcing the right components to stay true to the original appearance whilst fitting them in line with modern rangers can prove tricky, but it is a lot of fun to do so. So click on the card to choose which other character you would like to see cross the Rubicon Primaris in one of my conversion videos. So as always, I just want to say a big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and the folks who use my affiliates links. Your help is always greatly appreciated. If you like this video, then check out my other conversion guides and please do consider subscribing. If you're looking to recreate this miniature, then to source your extra bits, head on over to Bitsbox. However, if it's full kits that you're looking for, then be sure to check out Firestorm Games instead. Links to both of these can be found in the description below. And so until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.